Hey guys! I know it's been like 5 months since I made my last video, but I've been hard at work making Hyperpad the best it can be. I'm also working with other companies on side projects. There's just a bunch of cool stuff that I can't tell you guys about, but here's what I can reveal. The new oh my god, the mic clipped. I'm sorry about that guys. <laughs> But this is not no small feat. I've helped the team implement the new hub and we've already got a working prototype. In fact, we've got a public beta that you guys can try out right now. I'll leave a link to it in the description. But by the time you watch this video, it's probably going to be in the app store so look for that first. If you're going to do a beta test, I just want to note that the new hub is using a completely different server than the main hub. So any new projects, comments, and interactions that you have on there will not be present on the official hub. So don't expect to create a new project on there and have it still work after the hub is out. So yeah, when you create a new project on the beta, it's not tracked on the official server. So just don't work on your personal stuff when you're on the beta. That's all I'm going to say. So, I'm just glad that we finally reached this point where Hyperpad is literally going through puberty and like the hub looks extremely sexy now. Oh my gosh. Huge props to Samuel at Hyperpad who helped implement most of the things and I think he's revamping the user profile settings right now because it literally looks like shit right now. And half of the options here don't even work. <laughs> so I'm just glad he's working on that and that will be out on the official release. So on the hub, I polished a lot of stuff and even added some new features here and there. I've added this new loading indicator because the triangle one looks kind of weird and the team said, okay, like they didn't ask any questions, like I just added it in and they, they liked it so. I'm glad it's going to be on the final release because it looks really good. It, it looks professional compared to the triangle one. It, it's a rocket, you know? It's Hyperpad. I've also added a loading indicator for when images are being fetched from the server. I'm actually really proud of it because it looks cool. And I'll even show you how it works in the background. So you have the background which is alternating between two colors and then you have a gradient that moves from left to right every now and then. When the image is downloaded, I've made it so it creates an image view to display the loaded image and then fade it in over time. There are some bugs with the loading indicator as you can see here, but I fixed it already. Alright, I'm on the most recent version of this, and yeah, the loading indicator is completely fixed and it's really smooth. It runs really good actually. So yeah, this is the main page. You have featured content here and if you're logged in, your activity feed will pop up. We still have this avatar icon here which should contain important announcements like app store updates. The featured section works as intended. I even made a crossfade between images but it still flickers. Don't worry, I fixed that too. Here you'll see articles and posts from Hyperpad. You can tap them to open them. Pretty neat. And if you scroll down, you'll see projects. You can select a different filter to see different projects and it loads just fine. You can scroll down even more and it will load more projects as you reach the end of the page. If you tap on a project, it will open a new view and you'll see all of this cool stuff. We have the icon and the banner is even stretchy. Props to Samuel at Hyperpad for making that work. You can see screenshots and wow, even comments work. The hub isn't complete right now and it actually took a lot of iterations to even get to this point. It all started with a Figma design. Yeah, this is what the hub originally was gonna look like. You've got the projects, comments, featured section, everything. So right now we're fixing some bugs, polishing things up and adding new things according to feedback from you guys in the Discord server. For example, Frost reported that projects of comments disabled displayed comments anyway and you could comment on them too. Wow, that's not intentional. So I fixed it. Yeah. Pretty easy. He also reported that his backups were not working as intended, so that has been resolved. And Hangster said the search was too cluttered, so we fixed that. Filters are still accessible by just pressing this button. Pretty cool. Wait, I didn't even introduce a new search feature to you guys. It's amazing. You can search projects, users, comments, and even posts. And yeah, there are some filters that can help narrow down your search even more. Finding whatever you want is easier than ever. Just look at it. Uh, I remember the old days when there was no search. Well, bye, I'm not seeing that ever again. This has been an anticipated feature for years and I'm glad it's here. Anyways. So yeah, all the feedback you guys have given us right now is being considered to make the hub even better than ever. 
Right now, we're adding the ability to share projects via a link and you'll also be able to download your own projects too. So yeah, the hub is pretty much almost done. We just have to add in those features and also revamp other parts of the app. Speaking about revamping the app, I've also revamped the onboarding page. This is what it looks like right in the beta. You go through images and videos and then you'll see this cool login screen I've made. The icons are taken from many cool projects on the hub and they just move in the background. The icons were actually really easy to implement, it just took a while to find all the icons to use. The gradients were really easy to add to, they just, they're just stationary gradients, they don't move or anything so it shouldn't be hard to add. I've also made some stylistic choices here, I've downloaded the form and applied a new font to fit Hyperpad's branding. So. The login screen was perfect. It looks good on all devices and works in both light and dark themes. However, the onboarding pages can be improved, so um, I revamped it again. I went to Figma and designed a bunch of assets. I even recreated some UI inside the Hyperbit editor itself and taking account of light and dark mode. Once I've got all my assets, I put them inside the onboarding page and have them animate as you go through them. Cool, right? But that's not all! I've even made an interactive physics demo right here. Believe it or not, this is actually simulating a Hyperpad project in this view. You can even move the boxes around. I've also made a demo for showcasing particle effects too, which is also a Hyperpad project. And yes, it works in both light and dark mode. This actually took a lot of effort and I think it was all worth it because first impressions really do matter. Remember when Hyperpad was seen as an interactive bug maker when it was also a game engine? <laughs> yeah, people didn't like that. But times have changed and now Hyperpad is way more popular because it's literally the best game engine on iPad. So yeah, you're looking at these Figma designs and you're probably wondering why there's no text. So the reason why I've decided not to put actual text in these designs is because Hyperpad is currently attempting to support support other languages. So having the designs containing text would just make that task much harder. Plus, I think it looks cleaner. So we're working on translating almost every single text in Hyperpad into a bunch of other languages. Yes, that includes every single behavior and all of that documentation. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. Jeez, that is such a huge undertaking for us. But we've always strived to be inclusive. So we've put a lot of effort into making that app accessible to more people. Anyways, I wrote a Python script to loop through every single behavior inside Hyperpad, which would apply localization to the behavior name, documentation, and other user-facing text. Then when I went to Xcode to export all the localized strings, uh, there's like thousands and thousands of lines of text. Wow, so much. That's not all I've done for this update. I changed the font throughout the entire editor so that it fits with the branding guidelines that we have. Honestly, it looks so much better. I've added break and continue control flow behaviors so loops are much more versatile now which is pretty cool. The break and continue flow behaviors work exactly the same as they do in other traditional programming languages so if you know how to write a loop in JavaScript or Python or whatever then this will be really easy for you. I fixed like over 30 bugs so far as you can see in this changelog but this changelog only contains stuff that has been confirmed. There's probably gonna be even more stuff in this update. Oh my god. This update is gonna have like over a hundred changes, I'm not even exaggerating. This has to be the craziest update yet. The onboarding and login pages have been revamped, there's the new native hub, I fixed some of the most annoying bugs in Hyperpad, lots of crashes have been fixed, lots of improvements throughout the app, it's, it's wild. I even revamped the asset library, so when you open up something, the asset library actually opens to the left, which is pretty cool. Like if you used Hyperpet before, you would definitely notice that this is a lot different. Picking graphics and animations is so much quicker. There's like instructional text that tells you what you're doing and it's really contextual. So for example, if I'm editing this behavior that plays an animation, I can select the animation. And as you can see at the bottom, these are the animation frames and you can select whatever frames that you want and it's much quicker. So yeah, the asset library has been revamped and you may have noticed already, we have again redo in the behavior editor! Oh my gosh! Sorry, I've been waiting years to say that. We got undo and redo in the behavior editor before GTA 6? What? Oh my god. Excuse me. I have to lower down the volume of the parts where I scream so loud because it's clipping so much. Like, I don't want to kill your, your ears. 
but like this is a big thing for us and it's, it's something to get hyped over you know anyways so yeah i'll just go over some of the most annoying bugs that i fixed i finally fixed clicks not registering on mouse and trackpad i fixed projects not being able to be imported inside hyperpad viewer I fixed the app not being able to import stuff when the app hasn't launched yet. Fixed the long freaking loading times when you're creating a new project offline. Fixed the behavioral bundles acting kind of weird. I fixed like five different crashes, one of which is Socket.io, which didn't work on iOS 16 for some reason. So yeah, you can now connect to your old Socket.io servers running 2.0 again. Yay! I finally fixed the stupid joystick and tilt behaviors, oh my god. I've even made a whole video explaining why this needed to be fixed, and I fixed it. So in short, I reworked the player movement, uh, and now there's like additional properties to these behaviors, so now they're even more versatile. Wait, what? Wait, you're, they're not in this update? No! This is supposed to be the best update ever, and we're not gonna even put in the joystick changes and stuff like that, nor... I fixed whatever this bug is. Thanks, space. I fixed a bunch of bugs pertaining to loading scenes with refresh disabled. I don't know why this was not fixed earlier, because it was literally game breaking, but yeah, that's been fixed now. And I've recently fixed this bug where you can infinitely jump. Like, what the fu- Yeah, that one's bizarre. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> How does that even happen? It's literally in the physics engine that we use. It's not even our fault. Like, are you serious? Okay, now I'm kind of understanding why people hated this physics engine. It kind of sucks. Like, the default physics settings is kind of mushy. Like, it's mushier than the dump I took last night. Like, that's, that's disgusting. Like, ew. I did add new settings to kind of alleviate that in the new update. So you can kind of change how much the objects separate every frame. You can make it faster. You can make it instant if you want. I can talk about that in another video if you guys like the new collision bias settings. But yeah, I've also fixed movable platforms allowing objects to stick under it. Oh my gosh, I love physics. It, it's not confusing at all. It's really easy to understand. I'm lying. There are literally too many bugs to list. Like, this changelog is going to be longer than our terms of service. I can't. All right, now you're caught up to date with what we're doing. My MacBook will literally not turn on, so I can't do anything other than record this little update video on Hyperpad. Um, I think I overwhelmed it. Aw, oh, poor little thing. I went to Best Buy and bought a new charger for it. Hey, MacBook, here's your new boyfriend. Oh my god, I can't show this on camera. Alright, so I gave them like 24 hours to be together. Um, and I, I think my MacBook's really happy now, so that's good. That means I can get back to working with Hyperpad stuff later. And yeah, that's also why I haven't been able to show much footage. I've been really busy with Hyperpad in college and just life in general. And well, right now I'm on summer break, but I'm going to be going back to college soon, which is kind of scary. I'll try to upload more frequently. Maybe I might even go back to this game again, but I have much more important things on my plate right now. So I hope you enjoyed this little update video. Well, little. This is a really big update video, whatever. So go try out the beta if you like and give feedback if you can. Thanks for watching and maybe I will see you next time. Bye!